Hello, my name is Bea and I welcome you to Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. Today we're going to take a look at these amazing scallops that I found, the scallop shells that I found when I was walking near the beach. I collected them, I rinsed them in water and today we're going to take a closer look at them. The first thing I noticed is that they're both equal in size approximately. They're both four centimeters and a half this one and this one three and a half centimeters we will include all these measurements in our study four and four centimeters one as you can tell right away is a little bit flatter and the other one is a little bit rounder and when I flip them inside of the shell this one is a little bit shinier and more white this one is a little bit more yellowish and not as shiny it's more matte so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna divide my page one thing I would like to do is to add a silhouette of the shell to scale because they're very easy to make silhouettes of. I'm gonna make sure that my pencil is sharpened and I'm gonna put the shell against my paper with a finger on it very gently. And I'm gonna go around the shell very gently, very, very, very gently. So when I lift, from the paper I have the silhouette and I can then refine it a little bit more and why I want to do this because I want to include the measurements we said it was around four and a half wide so I'm going to use my ruler to put 4.5 centimeters and tall four centimeters I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one. Again, very gently. Hold with one hand. And when I lift it, I have my silhouette. And I can go and measure. This was three and a half centimeters wide. it was four centimeters tall so they're both as tall but this is slightly wider than this one but they're both scallops and I can later go and do I'm just gonna refine the silhouette a little bit that the silhouette is the outside drawing without any detail of what is inside and the best way to understand what a silhouette is is to look at a shadow there we go and then this one exact same thing let's refine little bit the borders and the first thing I noticed and I noticed when I was drawing is that the edge is much more sharp it's like she had some sort of teeth that is something I noticed And I can start writing those things. The edge is sharper. That is called serrated. Whereas this edge 
is a little bit smoother. This is wider than the other one. And overall, this is pinkier. And this is more orange, more yellow. More orange, yellow. And when I flip them, remember the observation that we did? Remember the observations that we made? When I flip it, the inside is matte and yellowish. Whereas this inside is shinier and more white. So let's make these drawings bigger so we can add all sorts of detail. The first thing I notice is that the shape is almost like a circle. So if I was to make, let's put this paper here so you can see it. If I was to make a circle with my non-photo blue pencil, then I can go and use that top of the circle to be the stop. But then around here, I don't need the circle anymore. I have a flat bottom. And I'm just doing the exact same silhouette. Now I can go inside and see that there's a line coming from both sides of the shell and they both met quite actually in the middle. And there are these two parts that are very equal in shape, like this triangle here and this triangle here. Another thing I notice is this shape here that I am going to color later. But I want to make sure that I include it now so I don't forget. It also has this circular shape on top. And then at the bottom, it has two lines that meet in the middle, almost. If it wasn't for this kind of circle here, do you see that? And then I see an area here that is also pink. And I see pink alternating with like a more yellowy color. When I look closer, I realize that each of these lines that has more color come all the way from the edge and till the very tip here and it's very interesting because each of these lines is called a rib and i counted them there are 16 of them and i'm gonna write that down and guess what these lines are called they're called ribs like our ribs can you believe it it has eight on one half and eight on the other so to draw them, I'm going to divide these in half. So I know I have to have 8 here and 8 here. So first, I'm going to add a line for each. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I could make them a little bit wider. Let's try again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. I'm gonna do the same here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now that I have where all these ribs touch the edge, 
I'm gonna make sure that they also touch this point here. This point is the apex. So with the help of the ruler, I'm gonna start linking that line with this. And because it's photo blue paper, photo blue pencil, sorry, this is just our guide. See what I'm doing? Connecting our lines at the edge with the apex. There's eight ribs on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on this other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that was the half of the um, of the page. Each rib is wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. So that's why these are just guides because now with my 2B pencil I can define the width and also the ribs go a little bit beyond the edge so with my 2B pencil I can use the guides I made with non photo blue pencil the edge of my shell and the same here another wider here than here and then they and a little bit almost it reminds me of a castle you know I'm gonna write that down it reminds me of a castle you know those towers that had these shapes at the top where the archers are so it reminds me of a castle There we have, so we have our ribs and our edge with our 2B pencil. And if we look close, our scallop shell, we see that this edge is smoother and connects with this other edge. Same with this other edge. One thing I've noticed, maybe because of, um, maybe because it was brought to the beach by the water, there's a tiny piece missing. So instead of following this perfect, perfect thing that we drew, it's missing a chunk there. So I want to make my drawing as accurate as possible. regular edge and I want to make sure that I write that this part was chipped off and that may 
makes it even more interesting. There we go. And they both meet here. There's a line that connects these two. So I'm going to start adding labels here because I found out that these two parts are called ears. Can you believe it? It has ribs and it has two ears. Ears. Well, one ear and one ear. I'll take the S out. It has two ears. And I am also with my 2B pencil now. I'm going to link. Remember all these edges that we drew? We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to link the edge to the apex. And I am this time not looking too closely at the photo group pencil because that was my reference from early on. I am now using the new drawings I made of each rib. Do you see? And when using a ruler, it's a good idea to use at least two fingers, one here and one here. Because if I use only this, it can still move a little bit. So I like to use, I like to use at least two fingers on the ruler. And I continue. We're almost there. Remember this part that was chipped? I still can see that this was my original rib. There we go. So now the fun part is that I know that every rib is colored differently than the groove. So each of these is a rib and in between the ribs is a groove and because I marked with my non photo blue pencil this area here and this area here now I can have fun with my colored pencils uh, coloring ribs and leaving the groove and color let's do that Okie dokie, so I brought some colors and I'm going to start with the yellow bits. So the yellow bits, this part here is this part here. Here is also kind of the same yellowish color. One here. And now I'm going to paint, I'm going to color the ribs. And I have noticed if I look closer that the more close to the edge I am, the more red it is. Whereas the more I am close to this area, the more orangey. So I'm going to start, make sure I choose the right area. So this is my rib, the rib of the scallop, not mine, but this is the rib. And as I am closer to the edge, it's a little bit more red. 
and then there is this gap here and then this second part I'm gonna color it with the same red but slightly softer so much more red here much more softer there and now I go with that orange on top so now it's much more clear that the more I am close to the edge the reddish it is and I'm even gonna go with another different red and color that so it's even more evident that the more closer I am to the ridge the redder it becomes and actually I can add these in a diagram here with the same color that I am using I can make a diagram can indicate here that this is the color closer to the edge and this is the color that is closer to the apex this part also is called the hinge because it is where the two shells meet. This is the hinge, so the scallop can open and close. So let's color the other ribs the same way, shall we? one you can use the same color in all and then use a new color in all or go one by one that is totally up to you if it becomes boring you can switch colors and as I was preparing for these guess what I learned I learned that scallops have two shells. This is just one of the two shells. Also, scallops are incredible, incredibly good swimmers. They would win all the golden medals at the Olympics because they are incredible swimmers and you may think how is that possible how can this be a swimmer well they swim like this so they can escape predators very fast because let me tell you they taste very yummy See, I'm leaving that space, same as in here. And I can also color in between the ribs, or the grooves are this kind of same color as this space here. Have you noticed? Nobody notices the blue photo, non photo blue pencil now. We used it and now it's gone. One thing I notice is 
make sure that I leave this area without any red. And you know what? I can also, because the ridges, see the ribs, they become tinier here. Maybe it's a good idea to go with my eraser and erase a little bit here. It's going to be a little bit muddy. But, ah, there we go. If the eraser becomes a little bit dirty, you just erase the eraser on a clean piece of your paper and then it's clean again. There we go. I can just... There we go. I want to leave a space here that is that color. That's all. And because the ears are behind, there's going to be a shadow here. And because it's at the bottom of the page, shadow like this. And also here, because this ear is behind the shell, the rest of the shell, there's going to be a shadow there. There we go. So I'm going to continue coloring this. you are coloring your drawing you are putting your hand on top of the drawing and then you realize that you're smudging everything so to avoid that you can have a little piece of paper that you put on top and then you're not smudging that's a tiny tip you can also start coloring here so by the time you're here you're never on top of the drawing that's another way of doing it alternating the colors the same way I see them there. The ribs are red and the grooves are this kind of yellowy orange golden color. Now same thing I'm gonna go with my red and my piece of paper to protect and be mindful of that area. Not red. Close to this one. Also 
That's my my shell, and I'm gonna add a little bit of dark red here to the waves. Make sure that I'm alternating with in the groove. Cause that's what I see. Tiny, tiny semicircle. Semicircle is just half of a circle. wish. This is after all your study and you might find themes and details that are different. There we go. So this is one of the two scallops I have and as we said it has 16 ribs and two ears. How about this one? Let's see. Well, First thing I noticed, and I did also notice when I was doing the silhouette, is that one of the ears is larger than the other. I also noticed that the edge was much rougher, it was sharper, like tiny, tiny teeth. But overall, the main shape is also a circle. More oval, I would say, because it was a little bit narrower than this one. So I'm also going to start by doing some sort of an oval shape with my known photo glue pencil. And I'm using also this as a reference. And this silhouette as well. Bottom is also flat, so I'm gonna make sure that I include that. Then, very clear that this ear, even in silhouette, you can see that if I make an imaginary line here, they touch. So now I know that this edge is gonna be here. I just need to carve out this triangle. This is my negative space. Do you see that? Approximately here. I'm going to carve out that. And on this side, this ear is much tinier and as Almost closer to this point, the apex. So we just made a very, 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 very schematic uh, drawing of the scallop based on this the miniature silhouette and the actual um, specimen that I have in front of me. So as or you see that the shells have two lines here that we 
leave this point here. This one is curvy. And overall, the first thing, one of the first things I notice is that this is flat and this is curvy. And we could see these very well in profile. How is curvy and this one is flat. That's why these ribs will be curved from here to here. And I am not going to count every single one of them, but definitely it has ribs and each rib is divided in two. When I look closer, and this is something that I made I'm going to try to count ribs as well. Um, I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one has ten ribs on each side. So in total, twenty. And each rib is divided in two. And guess the name of each rib is called riblets. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find the middle point. more freehand. Make sure that the lines are curved. And I'm not going to go into drawing every single one of the ribs. I did it here because they are very symmetrical and very regular. For this one, I'm just doing freehand curves. There we go. And one thing I really want to add is how serrated these are. Do you see that? I made some photos, very, very close up photos, so you could see it. So each rib. Each rib is divided in two. So if this is a rib, much wider here than here, is divided in two. And the edge is very serrated, very serrated. So I'm just going to add Not going to add all of them. I'm just free handing, making sure that I add enough detail so I can distinguish it, but without. 
want. Going totally insane. If I make more lines than the ones I need, I use my eraser. Making sure that I use my hole, making sure that I use the non for blue lines that I made before as a as a reference and reminding myself that the ribs they become thinner as they come to the very bottom at the hinge. that quite different from that very 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 smooth edge I bet one can cut cheese with it <laughs> worse make sure you don't cut yourself also if I make the lines thinner I won't have to erase it as I had to do here. So I might I make my lines darker here by pressing with the graphite pencil a little bit harder. And then I press much lighter when I come here. And here the edge becomes a little bit smooth. And then I see one of the ears here, and I see some lines, some texture. And then I come to this other half, and I'm going to use my tiny piece of paper so I don't smudge the whole page with my hand. And I see a very interesting, beautiful curve over here, here, and then I'll try not to cover it with my hand, sorry about that. I see a very nice line there, it looks like a piece in between the ear and the rest of the shell this part here that links the ear with the rest of the shell and that has actually a name it's a very interesting name I'm gonna write it here C T E R O L I U M sterolium and when the two shells are together the space in between over here, that space in between, is called the basal notch. And one thing that I'm fascinated about in this area here is I see tiny teeth-like structures that become tinier as I go up. I have no idea what that is, but it looks like teeth, so I'm gonna put an arrow here. It looks like teeth right here. Not here, and I didn't find it here. I find it here. So interesting. I wonder. I'll have to go to the library and take a look. I'm going to continue a little bit here with my ribs and I put my piece of paper so I don't get 
all the drawings much, especially 2B pencil, 4B pencil. But I, I like them because you can make very, very dark lines and very, very thin at the same time. I don't even need to change pencil, you see? Make sure that I divide all my ribs as I am seeing and then I can just make my like thing, 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 thing. Just a few more. Rib, space, rib, much wider at the top, and thins out at the bottom. converge there and I also see texture on the petroleum I see some lines that go this way which is interesting because if I hadn't seen this part closer I would have made lines like this and then this one this ear has lines that go like this. Isn't that interesting? They're quite regular in width. So definitely this ear is larger. I'm going to measure that. So in the specimen is one and a half centimeters. This ear is 1.5 centimeters. And this other ear at the base is half a centimeter. Can you believe it? I'm gonna measure that here. 0 0.5 centimeters. So actually this ear is much longer than this one. And isn't that interesting that there are other parts that are present here where the longer ear is located? I don't find any teeth like here. I don't find any basal notch here. The pterolium, no. So isn't that interesting? Just want to make sure that we distinguish those. Do you see that? So now I'm going to go and I'm going to find some interesting reds and pinks i see definitely there's a wide line there that i don't want to paint on top so i'm going to make sure with my non photo blue i want to make sure that there is a line that stays unpainted and there's another line here that is a little bit lighter and let's see i'm gonna see that also as i come closer to the edge the ribs are a little bit darker hmm i'm using this color but instead of going over all the ribs i'm gonna see how can i make it the color i am looking for more purple and red and then as I come closer here it becomes a little bit lighter and this is definitely lighter this red this ear is definitely redder than these 
I'm going to make the same color chart I did here. Let's see. So I'm going to start with these. This is the color closer to the edge, and this is the color closer to the apex or hinge. I'm going to have some fun coloring my ribs that as you can see and I can add that as in, a, in a zoom so it's clear each rib is divided in two each rib is divided in two let's make sure that I connect my circles so it's clear that this is a zoom and each of these is a riblet one and two how about that there's another thing I read about scallops that was very interesting not only they are excellent swimmers, but guess how many eyes scallops have? You might think eyes? What? Yes, they have tiny, tiny, tiny blue eyes, and they can have up to 200. 200 eyes because they're so yummy that all the predators are trying to catch them and the scallop is like mm -mm, not, not happening today so they need to be very alert and the eyes are in between the two shells the eyes are all in here. Imagine a sandwich with two shells. Imagine the meat inside the sandwich. That's where all the eyes are located. Put this here so I don't forget that I need to leave. so close to one another that it looks like the whole thing is red. It's a little bit reddish here. It looks like there's yeah, like this white space, it ends here. So maybe I can continue these ribs a little bit. And then there's an area here that is a little bit reddish. But overall, this scallop is much more pink and reddish. Than the other one. And all this part seems to be wider, a little bit wider.
And as I am drawing these, I realize another big difference between the ribs of both scallops. If I was to see these from the profile, I see that these ribs are very much flat, like this. Whereas when I'm seeing these ribs, they seem much more curve and they are divided into so they're more like flat ribs whereas these are more curved ribs that's something I am noticing as I am adding some color So the surface it feels also a little bit more sharp when I look closer with the camera I saw that the surface has like tiny 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 scale like tiny structures I'm not going to forget to add the detail of the eyes because um, scallops have more eyes than humans. They have up to 200 eyes and they are blue and they are all sticking out underneath the shell 200 up to 200 and their color is blue so I'm gonna find a blue color and I'm gonna put them here how about that <laughs> and finally because I don't want to forget to put my title I'm gonna put my title down here and this is my study of Scallop with two L's. Scallops. And I can round some of the letters and I can add some color after. Scallops. And because they are very good swimmers, I'm gonna give them the metal golden metal for swimming and I'm going to paint the gold metal gold and the ribbon blue and I'm going to paint And 
you can have so much fun with your titles. You can use different letters for each word. And I'm going to paint the old blue to remember that the eyes So that is my study of these two scallops. I'm going to put them here. This is my study. So now is your time to have fun.